Hello, everyone, and welcome to the First Circuit Podcast number 60. So we have uh, quite the lineup today. Uh, today we have Biter. Blarg. We got Old Bob 10025. Blarg, blarg. Myself, Larsh. And a special guest today of Dante245 from RxD. Good evening. Hey. All right. So uh, for today's topics, we got a pretty good list. Um, we're going to be going over, uh, you know, Dante, what he's been doing here in the MWO community and trying to build that community. We also have a Halloween event that is ongoing right now. The champion mech from last patch, as well as all those important patch updates, along with the heat changes. Some uh, real quick battle tech news and what's going on there. And just an overall going forward in MWO. So, Dante, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so, um, so I guess, uh, you know, if you want to go ahead um, and kind of say why you're here, I think you got plenty on your plate. Um, so, what's going on, man? Well, I was uh, invited here by Old Bob to cover some of the community efforts that I'm working on. Uh, the main one being uh, the HPG network. It's essentially a system of comms channels that would interlink various TeamSpeaks and Discords to sort of connect the branching community so we could better organize faction drops, community efforts like community games and whatnot, and just, you know, get people where they need to get. So, so like what actually like made you actually jump into this to go ahead and start this. I think it was because after the Comstar going down for a long period of time, which forced us to have to relocate, and then eventually, thankfully, get our own team speak and comms channel, uh, there was a, a time where it was just chaos, everyone kind of go in their own space, and I saw a lot of groups sort of dwindle and just you know, activity go down because there wasn't a whole lot of interactivity. There's not many people I'm, in the in the overall gaming community for MWO. It's a lot smaller than I'd say other gaming communities. Yeah. So it's important to sort of keep together what we have and also try and create a, a system that promotes new people to be able to hop in, find units, Specific, you know, like if you're looking for a uh, loyalist faction for Karita, well, we know where to send you, you know, and essentially the network would facilitate that. So, so like, is it uh, through TeamSpeak, uh, Discord, or like, you know, what's the best it way to actually for get both? both? Uh, okay. Essentially, all it is is a channel that is located next to wherever the entrance channel is on a given uh, VoIP service. So that could be. You know, TeamSpeak, Discord, or Mumble, if you're that guy. Hmm? <laughs> Mumble. Wow. <laughs> it's been a while I've heard, heard that yeah, one. Here. And so, basically, that channel would contain a list of TeamSpeaks or Discord uh, links and channels information. So that way, people could just look at the list and be able to find what they look for. And you could have it broke, broken up into, you know, uh, like clan, IS, Merc, you know, ge general dividers. And then below that would be subchannels that would contain actual community events. Now, what I mean by that is these are unique game modes or special community created um, game types that do not require PGI and are outside of the overall in game events. And you see a couple of good examples of this with like uh, Wid Clan Widowmakers Friday Night Fight Club, and then Queen's Guard has WTF Wednesdays, okay. and those are just two prominent examples. Yeah, actually, a long time ago, like I, I do, I do remember uh, Friday Night Fight Club. Um, this is like uh, years ago, though. But and and then after that, I just thought it just died. You know, like pretty much they just went away or something like that. But that's that's really cool. They're actually uh, um, still doing that kind of thing. Oh, yes. And see, that's the thing is I think a lot of people are in your case where they didn't hear about it or they didn't really know where it was or when it was happening. And so 
they think it doesn't exist or they think it just died out. And no one would know unless they are a regular on the team speak that it happens every Friday and been like that for about a, the last year or so. Mm -hmm. And, wow. and I think that's what, if with this network, it would basically be sort of like an announcements slash comms channel that would let everybody know who's active, what, groups are out there, what groups are open to people popping in and joining them for random drops, and what sort of events they are hosting, if any. And it would all be clustered into one area. And to connect all this would be some, something I'm uh, going to be putting together soon, essentially like a white pages on the forums that would have a list of all the team speaks and groups involved. That way people could always turn to that to update their individual HPG node on their TeamSpeak Discord or Mumble. Huh. That's really good. Um, I like that a lot. Yes, it's a good idea because like one of the things that, that does happen is like uh, um, like on my old unit I, I uh, used to play with, they're pretty much well scattered and play different games and different things. And so like we, everyone dropped. And so with this, as as far as community wise, you uh, you're going to have a lot of people come together and enjoy the game for what it is, you know, a battle tech and mech warrior and get together and know what's going on throughout the whole universe of battle tech or, or I'm sorry, like mech warrior, like online. And that's, this is a good idea. This is a really good idea. I like this. Now, um, um, how are you, um, how are you, how can people get in contact like with you? Well, I am, I do have a presence on the forum. So someone can always message me there and our units got a Twitter and a dedicated Facebook page. Just, so there is several avenues to reach me. On our individual team speak, we also have a list of all of our uh, um, social network and diff way, different ways to contact us via there. Um, but the simplest way would just be find Dante two for five on the forums. Send me a message. I check it almost daily. So. And uh, if you can't just give me all the links and everything else, I'll put them in the podcast here too. Ah, yes, okay. definitely. Hold on. Yeah, yeah and, and, to, uh -huh. to give my own two cents, just at least uh, on that topic, it's kind of funny, at least since, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, just uh, find me on the forums, but the problem with MWO's yeah, forums, it, forums are horrible. Um, yeah, yeah I, I don't think the forums look very visually very nice. And that you can also function... find me on Twitter and message me anytime. I'm not, okay. I'm under the panhandle uh, RxD. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah. Give me a second. I'll link that there. Yeah. Basically, like when, uh, like, just send me all the different links, and I'll put them all in there for people who can contact with you when they, you know, when they yeah. go and look at the information about it. Yeah. You know, Twitter. Yeah. Um, because you know, nah. I'm basically my units. You know, everything. Like, I, I, I honestly Liaison. give my officers flack that I'm doing all the work and they need to do more. So <laughs> <laughs> now, now, also real quick, so um, since I'm, not, I'm sure this is probably still a little new and still getting off the ground, but um, I guess uh, roughly, um, um, how many various groups have you really found or discovered between like you know TeamSpeak, Discord, and everything else? Um, Discord, not quite as many because I, I don't have quite as large a presence there. Just because I last thing I wanted to do was split my unit between two different uh, comm channels because mm -hmm. that would make organizing drops hellish. And so I pretty much focused on just TeamSpeak. But okay. I do have connections with another group who's doing something similar to um, what Comstar did, and they're creating a community hub for Discord Merc units or Discord uh, MWO units in general. And they, you know, I'm in talks with them, and we're working to do sort of like a cross-platform sort of thing. We even contemplate the idea of doing a cross-platform event like TeamSpeak versus Discord from MacWare so, Online. And so I guess, a... cool. So, so I, I guess um, like overall then, so I guess how many uh, split parties do you think you found? Um, on TeamSpeak, we've got at least 20 major units and hubs. Wow. Uh, the main ones, I've got uh, the Steiner, the main uh, IS units from Battletech lore, like Steiner, Davian, Curita, and uh, Efri Roselhog, which is where Mech the Dane uh, hangs his cape. Um, 
all of them are involved, including the Leo, which I was surprised still around because it's, <laughs> it's very small, but it, yeah. it does have people. And uh, then there's a various groups of Merc units. Like uh, I play regularly with Merc Star and uh, occasionally with KCOM. And then we've got Queen's Guard. And they're probably loving all the shout outs. So. <laughs> I'm sure, yeah. Now, like, do you actually, uh, um, is this mostly just faction warfare or? or... Yes. Um, my okay. unit is very faction warfare oriented. That's what we wanted to specialize in. And uh, generally, most of the units we, we meet, we have met on the battlefield in faction warfares. And we liked their play, and they were a good group of guys. And then we actually uh, met up on their comms channels and started dropping together and realized, hey, uh, we work well together. And sort of built a friendship over time doing that. So. That's pretty much how it works. That's how I met Larsh and Biter. You know, like, you know, just say, "Hey, man, you guys are pretty cool. I want to hang out with you guys." <laughs> you know. I think our recent is uh, we've now started to meet some major clan units. See, that was the biggest issue I had was trying to find clan units with dedicated comms. A lot of them are on Discord, surprisingly, mm -hmm. versus yeah. uh, Teamspeak. Uh, but R seventy nine Raptor Talons, who we drop been dropping with a lot lately do have a major presence on TeamSpeak, and they're working with us to do some uh, build up a community uh, event that my unit put together that we're calling Solarius. Hilarious, Solarius. Just a fun little uh, twist to make Solarius more interesting than it already is. So, so um, do you find it hard? I'm um, like I know, like when I used to uh, uh, put together like units with uh, uh, Battlestar Galactica online and a couple other different games. Do you find it hard trying to actually get people to only use one type of thing? Like, there's a great debate of you know Teamspeak versus Discord or or Mumble. Oh yes, you know that you, kind of thing. <laughs> it's funny you mention that because when I first created my forum post, and I'm sure a lot of people can go check it, there was a lot of people that instead of any sort of comments or feedbacks on the general idea, it became a Oh, wait, you guys are using TeamSpeak. Isn't TeamSpeak outdated? And it just came this back and forth that I eventually had to just break up and say, hey, this has nothing to do with the topic. I get that. You know, there's people who are pro TeamSpeak, pro Discord. I personally prefer TeamSpeak. That's just my preference. But at the same time, I understand where people who like Discord are coming from. But that's why I created this to be functional on basically any VoIP service that allows you to create a channel. Do you so. think? Do you think you're going to actually make a a website? Like, how is this going to be done through though? Like, basically, will it be like a website saying, you know, this is the hub, and then the hub, you know, kind of splits well, off into subgroups and everything. Forums. There would be a page created on the forums. I said that would, uh, function as sort of a white pages, and as new groups find interest. They would post their information to be added to the list on the white pages, kind of like when a new bit company comes into white and they yeah. want to get, you know, get out there and get noticed. And so they, hopefully the list will keep growing and growing and growing as we get more major units who are involved. Yeah. And then a lot Discord and team. Yeah. Now, along with that, um, I think Bob actually does bring up a good point um, on maybe even doing something like a web page because i mean there are free areas to, to host one um yeah. now, now the forums the forums are great and the forums do work well if you visit them a whole lot but the one thing i've noticed a whole lot in terms of i know of the forums at least is that you know they move you know quite often so if you post this you know you want to make sure it's not getting lost yeah. Um, you know, in the C, um, yeah, like unless, unless a moderator pins it to the front Unf page. That is the interesting you know. thing. You mentioned that because I am in talks with Tina. Oh, good. Oh, good. good. Okay. I'm actually good. going to perma post it up in, uh, events. Okay, good. Cause yeah, that's that the one thing you want to make yeah. sure. Yeah. Is yeah. that, so, is that so, mainly if you use the forms, don't get it lost. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the thing I'm, I'm talking with her to see about getting those two, uh, first the HVG and, you know, network endeavor so people have information on what it is and the different feedback that's been going on around it. And then also once I get the uh, essentially like the white pages for MWO set up, then hopefully get that pinned as well. 
Okay, good. Yeah, I, can't but just... I like your website idea. The idea is just I am a, but one man. And yeah, I am a... very strained, and I do not have a, a tech crew or a steam or staff. Literally everything I've done, I've done by hand while also going to college and maintaining a daily life. Yeah, yeah. yeah the daily life is, the balance of life is pretty hard. Like, I know, like, when I did Battlestar Galactica, it, um, a web page does help a lot when I actually would got all different units together and create, like, kind of like a hub like you did. It helps. I mean, it helps so much just for yeah. one centralized like location. No one has to pin it to anything. There's no problems, and you have complete control like over it. And and that, that in fact, that I'd idea. even love to throw out there that if any generous individuals or benefactors be willing to work with me to put together a, a website, I would be totally open to the idea. Just because any sort of you know uh, thing that takes off. Uh, some of the weight of everything I'm doing and, you know, gets in more feedback so it doesn't turn in like an echo chamber because yeah. right now it's just me and what I think works. And so I'm trying to change that and get more outside perspectives. So, Yeah, as I was uh, trying to say earlier, at least, uh, at least initially, it's just the plan of putting something up on the forums. And if, you know, people can use a Google search because the forum search function is terrible, they yeah. can try and find it and uh, that can be used as sort of a yellow pages uh, to find uh, where everyone is. Um, the grander scale of things since the forums, at least as I was trying to say, aren't that pretty and the search function doesn't work at all, uh, would be people making their own site. But that is a whole new scale of things yeah 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 very true very true so it, um do you have anything else to add to that like dante because i think we're gonna go mm -hmm. to the next yeah i think that covers it that covers it cool man i'm i'm actually pretty excited to go ahead and uh, go ahead and see this and be excited to actually see the final result and uh, kind of like uh and plus uh, also it brings the community together that's a that great thing about mech warrior is the community is the community yes. itself oh yeah definitely man cool cool deal cool deal so um okay so i guess we have next is um let's see here um uh trick or treat happy halloween happy halloween yes. <laughs> <laughs> happy, happy halloween actually i like this paint job they have for like you know for the trick or treat ones pretty cool but um loot bags everyone knows loot bags are one of the coolest things you could ever have inside the game i told my wife i'm like hey Play the game. You get loot bags. You get you get stuff to go ahead. And, go and it gets with. even better if you were smart enough to get the uh, uh, tournament supporters. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. early because if when you get it early, you've gotten constant perks for every single event up until I think December. So it, it's been the best ten dollars I would say straight out that anyone could ever pay buy. Oh yeah, yeah, because I mean. Because that ten bucks gives you a bonus in sea bills, and it gives you some bonus, you know, cockpit items. And then every so often they give you, they give out an event like this, and it's like, hey, if you bought this thing, here's some extra goodies. Bags, yeah. yeah, it's so good. Yeah, because I think I got a good amount of uh, GXP and sea bills out of that. But that's not even the thing I'm most excited about the Halloween event. In fact, one of my friends, uh, he's my second command, Terminator Smurf. Might see him around. And he's really big into coming up with all sorts of wacky paint jobs for his mechs. We had a guy like and that. And we too. sort of got into this contest, you know, to see who could one up who. <laughs> and the thing is, is he's like, hey, 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 hey. He was like super excited. I'm like, what? And then I looked down at the end of that uh, announcement about the Halloween event, and there is a create a costume sort of event where. Yeah. Each day, you'll basically be able to uh, you you post a image of a mech. It doesn't even have to be like a gameplay. It just just a, a simple one image shot of a mech you design based on you know, They have different categories. So the first day I think is what zombies undead. Yeah, it's the undead. Yeah. Yeah. So you create a undead themed paint job and design. You know, however you want to do it. And just for entering, you get 100 MC. And if you win, I believe you can get anywhere from like 500 MC on top of that. And for the person who gets first place in the whole thing, they get to choose a ultimate mech pack of 
their choice. Exactly. Exactly. And there's five different days and events of that. So it's it's good deal. Good I deal. mean, just yeah. 500 MC just for putting in a picture. I mean, you know, like 100 MC each time. That's pretty easy to do. <laughs> yeah. you know? And I actually forgot all about this too. So I'm kind of glad you brought this up because <laughs> it's because it's, I mean, it's there, but it's kind of hidden away in in the. Uh, on the actual I know, page I didn't event. even see it when I first came yeah. by, and I sort of heard about it, I'm like, because I, like, I don't know if people have seen it, but there is a mech I've nicknamed Pennywise roaming around the battlefields, and whenever I drive it, I will say the line, we all float down here, you'll <laughs> float too. <laughs> and I took a Nova Cat, and I actually painted it up to look pretty darn close to Pennywise. Very oh, that's good. awesome. I'm hoping it's going to be a runner-up, so we'll see. So, so the event actually starts on the 19th, which was I think yesterday. So, and then ends on the first, which is 12 days. And literally, you just walk in on the field and shoot your laser once at somebody. You get like um, and get 50 match score. You'll get a, a loot bag. If you, this is phase one. It's broke up in two different phases. Then the and then the second one, if you get 100 match score, which is doing a little bit of damage to somebody. You get uh, you get another loot bag, so it's two loot bags, just for actually just participating in the game. So it's really really easy to do. There's literally nothing. I mean, you can just walk on the field, do stuff. They also have little tiny decals you can get as well too, which uh, like cat's eyes or you know witch on a moon type thing for each each day, and each day has a different type of um, way to get those. Like say like get kill assists or actually just winning a match. And then and, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. And and at least I can imagine uh, me and uh, a lot of the uh, other gamers out there can't wait to add another uh, pinup decal to our yeah, collection. Yeah, I got mine today. Yeah. I saw it, and it actually looks really nice. My wife can't wait to get the cat's eyes because, you know, she loves cats, so <laughs> it'd be really cool for her. <laughs> but I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. To actually make it a bit clear, since we're going all over the place, yes, there's a yeah, no, loot bag event yeah. going on for about what, like two weeks or so. It's until the end yeah. of the month. Basically. Yeah. Um, there's a quote unquote phase one that started, uh, you know, last Friday or so, um, and then fi- like a week later, there's a phase two quote unquote starting, uh, whereupon you know th- where you just earn loot bags. There uh, is a just- twist to phase two though. Um, apparently, the requirements for each of the different portions have been increased to 80 and 160 from 50 and 100, which still, that's pretty easy. For most people, you know, a good arty strike can get you a 150 match score. So as long as you're not completely tanking, everyone should be able to achieve it. So, But it, that, it's a difficulty increase, which I guess is just to say, hey, you know, put some effort into it. I, I'm not sure... Why, but yeah, <laughs> and uh, also, too, you could actually, uh, once you do get up to 200 loot bags, you also can pick a prize, which is the Arctic Wolf ACWA or the Hellspawn HSN 8P. Um, either one are pretty cool, one for Clan, one for Inner Sphere. Yeah, uh, <laughs> one interesting distinction about this event uh, for phase one and two is each of 125 bags, 25 is for the easy to yeah. get match score and the 100 is for the harder to get match score which is the, the complete opposite way of how it usually goes instead they usually make it so you just play 100 matches and 25 of them you should do you know well enough in them in this event though they are asking you to do 100 kind of good matches and the first 50 are just an extra freebies which is a lot more demanding, actually, at least of your you know less Time-wise. competent players. Yeah, and there's a, there's two phases to this thing. Instead of just earning, you know, uh, over uh, you know over the period of two weeks, 125 loot bags. This event is asking you to earn 250 loot bags, and you're not even earning phase one and two together until phase two finally kicks in. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Do um, if you actually did the phase one and let's say you did a couple of them, like up to like fifteen bags for the fifty match score, and then the second phase comes in. Do you get like up to four per per match or what? Because yeah, they, you could. They, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, they do overlap, so you can earn four when phase two kicks yeah. in. 
but uh, that kind of leaves you in an awkward spot where it's like, I kind of wish to play now and start the ridiculous grind, but then again, I'll have to start when Phase 2 comes out. Why not just start then? Yeah, that's that's interesting. And why only 25 for the first 50 match score and the first 80? That's, that's, kinda, that's interesting they did that. You're right. Huh. I, do you have a reason why do you think that? Or, or theories what? Theory-wise? Um, my theory is I do remember just um, talking to different units, different people, is that they would wanted more loot bags. I mean, you always want more of the loot bags. And I think they saw that and saw different comments on the forums. They said, we're not just going to give you more loot bags. We're giving you a lot more loot bags. Yeah. Unfortunately, they also tied that, though, to <clears throat> your pick a prize. And I think that's where the mistake was. We all want more loot bags, but we don't necessarily want to have to get all of them to get the pick a prize. Mm -hmm. Well, 250 for the Buccaneer um, paint job and then 200 yeah. for the mech itself. So, yeah, yeah, you know, um, I, I guess that's okay. And then also, if you did pick the, um, if you did get the, um, uh, some of the other um, mech packs, you do get extra 25 uh, um, loot bags for those as well, too. Yeah, but if you're not getting camera. bonus, if you're not getting the bonus bags, those 250 bags requires at, at minimum 200 matches, so to speak, yes. to get. Uh, well, you can do it in 100 if you wait until phase two. Yeah. But uh, even then, 100 matches, all of them 150 match score over. Uh, now, for me, that might be not too hard, but there's even for me like matches where you know I don't do so well or the whole team just... You know, stops the enemy, and I have no chance to get any damage here. Like when you get rolled by Imperial, yes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That you know, basically, like I, I always love the idea of loot bags. I think it's really cool because it's like, ooh, look, what's inside the loot bag? The problem is, though, like a lot of times, like you know, my time is like limited. My wife's time is limited to go play. A lot of casual players getting into the game, they're like, oh yeah, this is great, getting loot bags, and then they get to a certain point where like, I don't want to play anymore. That's a hundred matches, man. That's a lot of matches to go play just to get these loot bags to get the extra bonus prize and the, and the bucket you're like camo. Yeah, um, can yeah. be a grind. Yeah, yeah, it's a grind. And and for the casual player coming into this, like for us, I know we could get the 150 match score. Like I know we can do that. That's that's pretty easy. But like look, you know, like just like Biter said, it's like oh man, I got three more matches to do because three games like you know last week would sucked really badly. So I got to go do three three more games. It, it it still takes up time, a lot of time for people to jump into this game and kinda do the stuff and I don't know. I don't know. Um I always love the idea of loot bags. <laughs> I, I I like the loot bags and you're still getting stuff from it. Yeah. But um making it um it, yes, we got more bags, but the requirements are higher and yeah. they're a lot more demanding of you. Like they want and you it to gets do it every day with the trick or treat decal every day. And it gets harder get in phase matches. two on top of that. Yeah, yep. mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, since they upped the uh, match score, yeah. Yeah, like basically told my wife, I told my wife, I'm like, hey, honey, it's a loot bag event. She's like, another event? I'm like, yeah. It's <laughs> every weekend there's an event. Come on. <laughs> I mean, the the sad thing face. for some people, for some people in the community is, if you remember, like they, they did stuff like this for, um, it started, I think, with Faction Warfare. And yeah, everyone's jumping on Faction Warfare to get uh, something, was it like 150 match score? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of players out there who don't stand a chance in hell of getting 250 yeah. match score, even with four mechs, sadly. Or at least they're not consistently getting it, and they're playing. You know, they, they have to games. play 50. They have to get 50 matches where they get 250 match score, and that's why in later faction warfare events, and including um, these loot bag events, they dropped it to just 50 and 100, so that as long as you're, as as Bob says, as long as you drop and sort of. Va vaguely spray some shots of the direction of the enemy, <laughs> you'll get 50 <laughs> match score. <laughs> yeah. Time to bring out the alarms. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> There's enough of that already. But always, too, like you do find that um, e events people play really differently, and unfortunately, though, it's been a week. Every week's been one event, so you find different play styles that, like, uh, why are you hey. doing that? But at least on the flip side, this event doesn't have like choose choose a certain map or do so much damage with like a machine gun. It's just map score, so you don't yeah, have people so just, just charging into the battle. 
Yeah, yeah, true. Banning yeah. a certain type of weapon. Yeah. Oh, I used to hate those. It was like, hey, everyone. It was like, hey, you, we'll give you a prize if you get this amount of damage with like a large laser. Everyone brings large lasers, and the variety is just tossed to the curve. Yeah. Thankfully, I think the minute I saw, uh, they had one event where it literally mentioned lock on missiles and mm. damage, and I'm just like, oh no, time to pucker up. Yeah, yep, yeah, right. Yeah. Well, 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 I mean, for that one, I was like, well, I'm going to bring AMS and I'm going to be a dick. <laughs> I'll, I'll be there. honest. I, I'm, I'm guilty of, uh, you know, my guilty learn pleasure. Occasionally. Yeah, same. So <laughs> I've watched some of your videos, so I can definitely attest to that. <laughs> Mermite, yeah. yeah. Okay, but, so. Um, oh, that, that's the thing, at least with the phase two, 150 match score, a certain number of the player base will go towards just all the lock-on missiles, LRMs, to try and consistently get that 150 match score, because they have to get 100 games um, with that, you know, with that yeah. requirement. And the uh, pick a prize, um, it's not even as good as previous uh, loot bag events, like getting 200 loot bags, you know. And like only two max to choose from. Two yeah. max to choose from. Mm -hmm. The Arctic Wolf okay, A and Hellspawn AP. Okay, they are okay mechs, but it's not the same as getting just like yes. a wide selection of champions was what they offered before. Yeah, so personally, I, I like the idea of if they would have instead a list of mechs that they haven't had on Pick a Prize before. Like that'd be cool if they had a ten mechs that they have never been on the Pick a Prize. Well, I think these two technically haven't been on Pick a Prize. So, but, so um... it, it's a start, but there's only two. That's Yep. Yeah, if they had a little yeah. bit more, be great. Very yeah, cool. so you, you grind all the way, and and yeah, particularly if you, as I said, you've not done any of the, got any of the bonus things, you or, pull a buccaneer pattern, just a buccaneer pattern, have to grind two fifty yeah. loot bags. Another idea would have been if the pick a prize could be one standard variant of your choice of a new mech that's currently not out for sea bills. That would give people an opportunity to get to play and try out something that otherwise they might have had to pay cash for until it came out for sea bills, which can be months down the road. Perhaps the problem, at least with all these events, is that you you don't want to give too much stuff away to the community. There's a balance. Again, the one variant. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I, one... I think the way the, the way to get to the community's hearts is just to offer them urban max. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. yeah that, uh, uh, offer them the urban, there. urban mech champion yeah. as my, the my, uh, and people say, "Well, I can't complain about more urban mechs. I love them." Yeah, my 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 uh, second in command's got I think like eight of them, and he's got <laughs> everything from uh, minion paint jobs to uh, you know monsters ink paint job. I mean, he he just yeah. got one for every season. So That's sounds true. like a good fit for. Sounds like a good fit for, fit for, for my Discord. Yeah, Did you guys get the prize for Trick or Treat 3 last year? I don't mm. remember. Like, you know, yeah, what was it? Yeah, what was That's it? Like so the what they offered was way better because what they did was they offered a, a selection of mechs. So the Stormcrow and the Hunchback and a couple of others, I think. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. They're the champion variants, but they also come stock with a Franken pattern with, painted in the Oh, no, way. those were specifically variants that remember back when they had on the steam store uh the special yeah, mech packs, and essentially it was a special variant that already came with the paint job and the colors and all that well essentially they took the the those mechs that they already had coded and those were your choice for prize or at least some of them were so yeah that was that was pretty nice yeah, yeah that was if a good one here last year yeah, last year they gave a special variant. Uh, I picked the Hunchback, for example, the hun special variant of the Hunchback 4P. So I have an energy Hunchback with a Seabill boost. And that's way more interesting than just a Hellspawn. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Bill. Yeah. Yeah, maybe they're, maybe they just decided just to give these out and that's it. And uh, lab, yeah, yeah, last year was a lot better. Damn. But I haven't mm. gotten a Hellspawn yet. So it might be. Yeah, same. Good. They're fun. You know, they're definitely fun to play. Just the hit boxes. Yeah, ready. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so that's uh, anyone else for the uh, trick or treat thing? No, we should probably that's keep moving here. So cool. no, that's mostly the event covered. Yeah. One every day. Every day has a different thing, so it's a bit and hard to keep there's track also of. the 
paint your Mac and upload a image of it to the designated area. And yeah, I need to do that for sure. Just for doing that. Yep. As well as a chance to win a ultimate Mac back of your choice. That's mm-hmm. really Pretty good. Cool. Yeah, so the competition, the uh, dress up your mech competition thing is visible in the Trick or Treat MC and Mech Customization sale at the very bottom where they... Yeah. Uh, That's where it is. I was trying to find it the whole damn yeah. time, dude. And it should be noted as well is that for that, I would assume, competition, um, it, you know, if you have a mech that mainly you want to paint and you don't own it, you don't need to buy it. You can just go ahead to the store, yep. go to the mech lab, paint it, and get a photo. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You could put any combination of paint, color schemes, and or boltons onto your mix. Yeah. In so the get creative. Like mm-hmm. get, get so get really creative with that, guys. Mm-hmm. You don't need to own the colors or anything like that. Just paint away. And yeah, the themes that I think they've planned out are undead slash zombie slash ghost for the first category. So you know your uh, undead creatures. And if anyone wants to, uh... I'm trying to. Sorry. Professions. So fireman, doctor. Um... Uh, what's your your little um, Cop. hit fox lash? The medic. Oh my! Oh the medic! Yeah, the medic. That's like, a, like I'll just put that in already, as is. <laughs> I had to tell my second in command that stormtrooper, though it is a profession, it is a fictional profession, and you can't use that. You better video game. <laughs> he can tr- He could try and get 100 MC anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, superhero slash villain slash comic slash movie. There you go. So cosplay, basically. Yeah. I and my I'll next go with favorite. That. Creature, animal, and monster. Uh, so you can dress up your mad dog as a dog. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, video game. And also, I know did you, not see that one. And also, no, you guys can't actually use the bolt-ons as well. So get creative with those, with yeah. those, and have fun with it, man. Well, for the so, theme of uh, video game, can I just submit my mech? I mean, it's it's yeah. for online. <laughs> <laughs> but then somebody might try and use that for profession too. I mean, you you got to be careful. <laughs> yeah, right. I'll submit my Shadow Hawk that's painted like the Mech Warrior Five release trailer. There you there go. We go. <laughs> <laughs> there the we PGI, go. but um, with, it's not even PGI who chooses the winner. It's uh, community vote. Yeah, 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 that's cool. That's actually pretty good. Okay, so uh, next up we have the... Um... Everyone vote Ugandan Knuckles, no matter what. <gasps> Ugandan Knuckles. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> okay, okay, time to get my awesome out. Where is it? Yeah. Uh, okay, next we have the champion and some of the patch notes of uh, of how it well, is. Um, right? No? Uh, sorry, uh, just to finish off, though, Trick or Treat also <laughs> comes out. Uh, with a sale, because always there has to be sales and stuff. We have mentioned it here and there at least, but anyway, um, if you purchase MC, you get 30% extra. If you give it as a gift, they get 30% extra, as long as the event, you know, the sale is going on. And uh, you get you, loot bags. Yeah, if you purchase MC, you get a whole bunch of extra loot bags. It's like 116 or so if you purchase the $100 package. Oh, wow. Which is a lot of loot baggage and helps you a long way to get that beautiful hellspawn, I guess. But uh, yeah, well, it's a nice cool. extra bonus. You're, you're getting bonus MC and loot bags. Don't um, forget all the colors are on sale. Yeah, 50%. 50% Ooh. off all the colors, along with Franken Buccaneer camos, along with uh, one shot camos. Uh, 50% select decals and cockpit items that are Halloween y. And there's also 45% off certain uh, Inner Sphere and Clan mechs so for much stuff. <laughs> And it's overlapping with the uh, current event, or the previous event, whichever way you look at, the Solaire 7. Okay. So, lots of goodies. Lots well, of goodies there. Actually, I'm going to have the Halloween cockpit like item of the Laughing Pumpkin. That one's pretty cool. I've always liked that one. Mm-hmm. Okay. I really enjoyed these, uh, the Zombie Atlas. Remember that one? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, that one was really cool. I like that one a lot. Oh god. <laughs> so uh, next we have the champion and the patch, and also I believe we'll be talking about the heat changes as well. So, uh, you guys got the champion mech, right? Like, like, what do you guys think of it? I like it. Um, like it. I have not played it, yeah. but I have fought them, and it actually surprisingly uh, outperformed expectations. I saw the profile, and I was like, oh, man, this thing's going to have huge hitboxes. But then I saw how very good at torso twisting and arm shielding 
it can be. So surprisingly, it's very good at spreading damage on top of having the okay amount of armor quirks stacked on. So it's it's really durable. Yeah, I would say this. Yeah, like I mean, so far, like you know, um, for for example, the past mech packs that I got, I really wasn't too thrilled about them. I couldn't find anything I really enjoyed, and they mm. felt kind of fragile, even unskilled. Um, but the champion, though, um, even unskilled, I, I've had a blast using them. Um, typically, you know, these things have a very good variety of loadouts, so 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 each one can have their own flavor. Um, they've given some um, some quirks or enhancements to each one to make them feel different. Yeah. Um, but I, I would say overall, the way I've been playing them is that typically, um, you know, each one can have you know like one or two very large weapons. Um, so, for instance, like my probably my best and favorite one that I've chosen so far is the uh, Champion One N Two, and on that one. Um, all I loaded was a AC-10, a MIRM-40, and then, kind of like for all of them, I just put small lasers as backups. So I tended to just focus on those two very large weapons, um, and I, I rarely ever load anything in the arms. I just, I just use them as large, just barn door shields. Hmm. But yeah, but but typically I just I just do two large weapons, and then uh, usually like, like mid to late game when people are kind of broken up, um, at least on the one and two, I've loaded uh, five small lasers, so it's very low heat, um, and yeah, and it's just uh, I've been doing very well in it. I've also been seeing a lot of success with the tr- like a large ballistic, like an AC twenty, yeah, mm-hmm. um, some combination of four or five medium lasers. Yeah, and yeah I have that on right the three uh, N. Yeah, three N. Yeah. Yeah, actually, and uh, interesting enough, you mentioned the arms. I don't believe many of the variants have arm mounted. I think there's only a few that have arm mounted weapons. Yeah, like the hero has them. Um, yeah, let's take a look here. Like the hero, yeah, because actually, yeah, because the uh, one and two only has a AMS in the one arm. Yeah. If you want that extra little bit of protection, but yeah, but um, yeah, it almost seems like a lot of these variants they've kind of put them more the mindset of that people are, well, p- people will see the arms, they're gonna know that they're a large target. And I don't think I've seen many people use the arms for anything, really. I mean, like, I've been liking it. The only issue I have, though, is I, I've been noticing I've been being cored a lot as far as, like, um, as far as the center torso for some reason. I don't know about the front hitboxes. I know the arms are great shields, and uh, I've been talking to different people, and they're like, yeah, the arms are perfect for shielding. But it just seems like, uh, um, I, I don't know what it is. It might just be me, how I play, my play style, and you know, stuff like that. Just the engine just gets cored, boom, or, or the center torso gets cored just almost instantly for some reason. Um, Strange you said that because when I looked at the uh, profile of it, it actually looks like it's good at spreading damage even just yeah. straight on yeah, because it has that sort of round slope. Mm-hmm. Well, like I said, it just might be my potato ness, basically. But you know, but. <laughs> maybe yeah, because yeah, cause I know, as I know with this, like I, I torso twist for days, and I'm usually doing pretty well even yeah. near the end of a match. Yeah, and uh, but but overall though, I I would have to say I'm a lot better than the other uh, back that just came out. Oh my god! Yeah. And, and once I actually got some good builds from the community, holy cow, this thing just rocks. I mean, it's it's a really fun back to play, really fun back to play. And, and I actually like the hero and I like the three ends. Those are my two favorite ones. The one mm-hmm. in is it's there, but but the hero and the three end are one of my favorite ones to go play. Yeah, and um, also I really enjoy the uh, one N B because uh, that one gives you a plus twenty uh, percent on velocity, um, and it gives you uh, four ballistic slots. So with that one, I've actually loaded three rack twos and just two medium lasers, and um, the velocity of the rack twos are pretty intense. Hmm. Um, and you can just, and so you can just go in oh, and wow. just blind people. It's pretty great. It's funny that you mentioned that because I was thinking when I do get an opportunity to pick one up, I'm gonna have to slap rotaries on one, one of them just out of principle since Use a lot the of people one MB. Are noticing that the mech looks an awful lot like the A10 Warthog. Mm-hmm. That's why I built it, and I painted yeah. and, I, and I I painted <laughs> mine just Puff just the magic a solid dragon, gray. Maybe puff the magic dragon. Yeah, because I actually have a, a video coming out either today or tomorrow um, about the one N, because um, I had a really good match in this thing on Thursday. But yeah, but it's just three rack twos, two two, med- two medium lasers, and that velocity when that kicks in is a it's it's really good. 
That's cool. Yep. So uh, yeah, the the champion came out uh, fairly decently quirked. Ten survival on uh, extra armor, even on each uh, torso component, and its uh, hitboxes have turned out to well, the to- CT is part of its torso. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, yeah, ten extra armor on each uh, torso component. It's got not necessarily as good agility as the other IS sixty talents, but decent agility. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, it, it's not lagging behind like the poor rifleman. The so torso is fantastic, though. I have seen that thing just mm-hmm. live back and forth. Yeah, that's probably in part because it has decent agility stats. It's going to have something akin to like a forty-five or forty tons. Yeah, it's so. got a turn rate of seventy point four seven, and it's also a turn rate of uh, one twenty-six degrees per second. Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying, for example, it has acceleration forty-three, yeah. which is about the same as the Hellspot. <laughs> so yeah, it's pretty quick. Yeah. Um, yeah, so decent agility, good survival on the components that somewhat matter. Um, the hard points have turned out to be you know, fairly good for, uh, you know, with IS, there's plenty of options for ballistics, missiles, and even energy loadouts, and it usually combines all three, allowing you a great variety of options. I would say it's sort of got the body of a marauder, at least in the way it can sort of twist its nose and spread damage, and the arms do actually help tank a bit of damage, even though some degrees that the mech is so wide it kind of blocks your teammates um fire sometimes and it can also as you're running around you know if if you're backing or you're walking around a corner people shoot your arm as you come out or shoot it as you go back yeah. so it takes a lot of extra fire it isn't actually necessarily quote unquote shielding it's it can sometimes shield like the hunchback to she- sees um sh- arms shield kind of like it, those uh, little kids who like to fly or run around with like the the airplane arms <laughs> what do you mean? I still do that today, Dante. It's fun as hell. Have you? <laughs> yeah. So um, it's it's turned out fairly decently. I think though, even if it is able to spread damage and all that, and has some survival quirks, it, it it's no Kentaro or IV four, uh, the quick draw hero. You know, it is still a little squishy, and it is still quite a big target, a quite a big, weird, tall target. It looks a lot bigger. Yeah, a lot heavier tonnage than it actually is, so it draws more aggro. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it's it's it, for the most part though, it is pretty solid. You've got Marauder shape with Ebon Jaguar kind of um, peaking profile, more or less. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a pretty speedy um, sixty tonner. Uh, I think is well balanced compared to the other mech packs that we've been given, and is I mean, in, in my opinion, it has been very playable since day one. Yeah, I would actually play this again. Like I said, of the other uh, mech that that came out, that shall not be named. That was the last one. But <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, yeah, I would play this again. It's a it's a fun mech to play. Uh, uh, just like Biter said, though, the arms are kind of like you got to really get yourself out there in order to go shoot your stuff. But still, it it's still one of the better mechs out there. As you know, it's better than the rifleman, I guess. But uh, pretty cool mech though. It's a lot of fun to go play. And a semi novel warhorn. So. Yeah, the uh, the the bell. I didn't actually put that in. Damn it! Thank you. Man. Oh, Thanks. Yeah, because it's 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 basically like a like champion boxing bell. Oh, really? It's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> cool. cool. This goes along with the one-two punch sort of builds on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ding ding. So, all right. Uh, to move swiftly along, though, there were a few other things introduced to last patch that we've had some experience with. In uh, the biggest change, of course, being the new heat system. Yay! Yes. Ooh. I've actually really liked that. I, I oh, yeah. thought I wasn't going to like it, because there are certain parts of it, you know, like uh, when I saw the heat cap reduction on double heat sinks so drastically uh, more dip more so than, like, singles. And I saw that, and I'm like, oh, that might make it rough for even to attempt an alpha, uh, even on the lower damage in alphas. But surprisingly, it worked out, because if you can alpha on some builds your heat dissipation is fantastic so so it actually allows you to sustain those alphas if you can pull them off the baseline of heat capacity for any mech with 10 heat sinks is 50 so everyone has quite a lot of heat to play with you can fire five isp ppcs all at what yeah well without the ghost heat but you can fire five of them and you'll reach your heat cap which is still a lot of energy to fire um the, the heat cap doesn't, for the most part, feel like it changes that much 
uh, because dissipation is the name of the game for most mechs in terms of uh, predominantly their sustained DPS and somewhat also even their you know burst DPS. As long as you're able to sustain yourself with dissipation, uh, it doesn't really matter as long as you have enough capacity to work with, which is what this thing has done. So I think overall, yeah, as it's somewhat expected, this patch has given everyone a lot more heat to play around with, lowering the TTK and somewhat exacerbating the problems almost, at least I think we'll see in the future, exacerbating the problems with heat balance. Um, with everybody able to um, uh, build up and then throw away a lot of heat very quickly, uh, heat isn't as strong a balancing mechanic in the game anymore, at least in my mind. Like um, PGI wanted to try and help sustain DPS builds, but for the most part, uh, the big winners in this are those who are able to chuck out a lot of damage and just keep on churning. So I've seen a lot more over time people taking more of the energy boats because they have such great versatility and range and mm -hmm. you know, damage potential and also even um you know like the dual uac 10 uac uac 5 on well not the kodiak anymore but madcap mark 2 that build was incredibly incredibly hot and it built up to its heat cap fairly quickly and then it kind of they had to slow down with all the extra dissipation it's you know it still builds, builds up heat quite a bit but with all that extra dissipation it's able to chuck out a lot more heat and just keep on churning and uh churning through people's armor so you know just uh, engagement ranges on average is, it seems like going a lot longer you know there's um it's got to be much more of a snipe fest sadly and pgi is somewhat designed in the complete opposite direction <laughs> of where they've been going in uh, the last few months it did work out nice, though, because also along with that patch came uh, some nerfs. And I say nerfs because when they uh, reduced the damage on the clan medium pulse, ER meads, and uh, heavy larges, and I think heavy meads as well. Not sure on that one. Uh, no, uh, heavy large, medium, and medium pulse, okay. as long with regular yeah. large. Yeah, so when they did that, they said that they had been contemplating and they were there open to possibly give them cooldown and heat uh, reductions to compensate for the reduced damage. But because of the new heat system they put in, they actually are performing better than they did even when they had increased damage. And I was a nice surprise. Mm -hmm. well, I know myself, though, like using the Hellbringer when we brought him out last Friday, yeah, I would hit the heat cap really quick, but then boom, it would just go right down really quick with the, you know, like with the dissipation, and that that's just like maybe just okay, fine, cool. All I got to do is kind of just how I fire just a tiny bit, and I could just do my damage like crazy, boom, 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 and just, and just keep on going. And that yeah. was actually pretty cool yep. about the new heat, you know, about the heat stuff. It just you got to just adjust your mechs just a tiny bit, play with them a little bit, and then kind of like you know focus there. And and actually, this whole heat system made it so much better now. Yeah, with I'm still a playing more... around. <clears throat> with, with a lot more, yeah, with a lot more dissipation to play around with, uh, there's a lot less of a long-term heat game. It's just um, every, you know, it's, it's more like you have to just uh, consider your heat every five to ten seconds or so. So for that, um, yeah, we we all ran the the laser vomit Hellbringer. We would in fact like charge people on hot maps because yeah. we a have range and b we could just keep firing forever and ever and ever. Particularly when you're using cool shots. Um, kind of potions. Yeah, and and it's like you get hot <laughs> and you you fire an alpha. It, get, it it builds up really high in your heat cap. You wait for the th the cool down. You wait an extra couple of seconds and you're good to go again. So it was all just a matter of making sure that you are able to pump out as much damage as possible as quickly as possible uh, for the most part. As long as you balance your heat, you're good. Whereas the previous heat system, which I somewhat actually kind of preferred, at least there was actually this long-term issue where if you built up, if you were up to like 70%, you were going to take a while to actually you know, get your bar down. Uh, with this though, um, it, it sometimes feels like there's extra pressure to keep the damage up because um, yeah, you know, I'll push up, I'll engage, I'll get a near heat cap, I'll back down, and you know, ten seconds later, I'm good to go. I'm at zero <laughs> percent, yeah, and uh, sure. that time, I'm not engaging the enemy. I'm lowering my sustained DPS. So again, it's really good to have long ranged uh, weaponry. Heat is a, uh, as long as you're able to watch that bar and never go over a hundred percent, you're good to go. 
And whilst that does emphasize individual skill, it also de-emphasizes the overall balance of the uh, the heat game and heat efficiency, which again means yeah, we're going to see a lot more DACA and long range laser vomit, uh, maybe even learn perhaps, but uh, you know, just the ability to poke and sh- uh, skirmish at longer ranges is going to be way more effective. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One thing I did notice about it, though, is that uh, I, I mean, it kind of makes sense when you lose uh, a torso or your engine gets damaged. Uh, they now losing heat sinks has more of an impact on your ability to dissipate. It drastically drops, so it goes from that fantastic heat dissipation to almost non-existent. If you like a light engine, lose a torso, or an XL lose a torso of your clan, and that was a bit of a change from previous. Like before, you could still dissipate as long as you took your time, uh, even if you're beat up. But now I think um, people who are running like zombie builds might be n- negatively impacted by this sort of system because now it's really going to hurt, uh, hurt people who, uh, you know, rely, you know, were able to keep fighting on beat up mechs. So, well, what are you talking about? It depends on my cockpit. It depends on what kind of zombie they use. Like at least on the IS side, you can actually take, of course, standard engines. Meaning you can give a whole side off to the enemy. Yeah, and but I mean, like all your heat lose, sinks will uh, still be intact. Yeah, but if you do lose, you know, um, like if you're losing an engine under the certain size, or there's a heat sink, it they they make the the reliance on having the minimum ten heat sinks a little bit more. So I think it's a little bit harder to like kind of keep on uh, chucking when, when you're banged up. So. You lose a lot of capacity and dissipation whenever you lose a sight also, yes. Yeah, because yeah. Uh, the, those first initial 10 heat sinks give you a huge amount of capacity. So, yeah, I, I have noticed that in like the meta um, when we did all the laser hellbr- hellbringers, if someone loses a sight also, they aren't, their firepower isn't just halved, it's like 33% or so of what it used to be. Not just because they have less weapons, but just they can't manage even those fewer weapons. Yeah, it's a lot harder. A lot harder. Yeah. So, okay. Um, is, is that it for heat? Or like the uh, the notes? Uh, well, um, there's one other thing, but oh, yeah. yeah, just to round up my thoughts, we'll have to, obviously there'll be an, uh, future balance changes in the future yeah. with this heat system. Um I, I, th- I feel personally, at least, like it, it does feel great to go in all the mechs I've used to play with and um, have them have even better heat management than they do before. <laughs> all, all the mechs have got 40% buff or so to the heat management. Mm-hmm. But on the flip side, um, it, it's uh, we'll have to wait and see how the meta changes as a consequence of everyone having so much more heat to play with. But uh, in, in line of trying to reduce... Um, certain open-performing weapons, I think this is going to do exactly the opposite. And mm. PPCs, man, have they really benefited from this. Like, I've been oh, seeing, yeah. like, the uh, quad PPC uh, Warhawks, or even the, especially since the Awesomes got that new PPC mm-hmm. uh, quirk. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now you can do triple heavy PPCs, and then you cool down fast enough that you can pretty put out pretty good damage. Yeah, in a hot map, mm-hmm. I was using an AQ, and wow, yeah, it just it's crazy, man. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. It's nice. Yeah, with a lot more heat to play around with, ISPPCs, despite being uh, thoroughly mediocre before, um, might sort of have a place. You expose for a very short period of time, and blam, you do you know twenty, thirty damage, whatever, to a single component, um, and you have the dissipation to not really worry about all that heat you're generating. So yeah. Yeah, it, 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 in the new snipery meta that we're probably moving towards, PPCs, Clan, IS, uh, certainly are going to find their stride. Yep. yep. All right, the other big change, other than heat scale limit, I just want to go over, would be our ECM and lock-on with the oh, Artemis yeah. yeah, your favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was my favorite part of the whole patch. The... Yeah, my too, actually. I was uh, happy to learn that... Uh... When they they went back because they realized that there was a problem with um, close range lock on weapons like streaks and ATMs, how they are being affected adversely on what was meant to nerf LRM's ability to just constantly spam, and they they instead made it where if you have direct line of sight, which you would be if you're running streaks or ATMs, you negate the effects of ECM's ability to lock on. 
So that was a nice plus. Yeah, I, I really liking this uh, change. Um, whenever you're using a lock on weapon, ATM, streak, LRM, uh, they're best used often effectively at direct, uh, direct fire and at closer ranges where you get faster locks and the enemy have less chance to avoid your fire. Um, problem was, though, ECM did just completely shut you down. So the yeah. way to play those lock on weapons was to take a probe and some crawl close enough to cancel the ECM and I hope there's not a second one. Or you just had to avoid any area with an ECM mech and come back to them later when you have plenty of time to lock onto them and they're distracted, which was always a huge drawback of the lock-on systems, that you had to hope there was enough uh, Beagle probes around, Narcas around, or that there were... Like, if there was a whole... If you were 12 Lermas versus 12 ECM mechs, um, the Lermas would not be able to get any yeah. shot in. There was no real way for them to counterplay it other than all the Lermas somehow pushing in and learning a small corner of the you know, of the ECM blob. <laughs> uh, it was just an absolute nightmare, at least in terms of the overall viability of the weapon systems. They already have... They, you're not even aiming the weapon systems directly anyway. They're just splatting all over the enemy. And the ECM was a huge, like, hard counter to lock on weapons. And, and um, then you uh, throw on top of how they reduced the targeting ridicule for lock-on weapons yeah. some time ago. <laughs> meant to, you know, uh, reduce the effectiveness at, you know, uh, non-line-of-sight LRM fire. But it also affected, like, knife fighting with uh, streaks or, you know, close-range ATM fighting. Mm -hmm. Because now you're trying to move and keep locks on a moving target at the same time with a smaller reticule, and on top of that, ECM was making your lock-on time way too long. So yep. I'm glad they I, took that out of the play. So. Yeah, because they also did remove the Artemis change, um, the lock change. So, you know, instead of taking seven seconds or so to lock onto a target, it would take you ten, and it would just... it. You know, the lock-on times become so ridiculous. It was, you know, the, the the target who you flanked wouldn't even notice that you had been sitting there diligently locking onto them for a quarter of a minute. I yeah. was so sad I had to uh, hang up my uh, eight streak to Arctic Wolf because it just could would not perform anymore. Yeah, so with this change, all the direct lock-on uh, missile weapons can be used um, a lot more liberally now. As long as you don't get stuck under an ECM bubble, you can move forward and lock on as if they're a regular target. And that is hugely liberating to these lock on missile weapon play. I've always said, at least with these, it's much more about positioning and uh, getting to the right spot, locking onto targets, suppressing the enemy. You're not doing focused fire to just the right component. You're trying to assert map control. You're trying to, you know, uh, push the enemy into a certain corner, you're trying to hold parts of the map with good positioning. And uh, the big problem, the big counter to that was just, oh, there's one guy with ECM, so you can't push that corner. Well, yeah. now you could push the ECM guy, you could push uh, wherever you like now. So it's, it's a hugely liberating change. My only concern, at least, is, of course, with everyone having huge amounts more dissipation, is you're going to see a lot more direct fire sniper rebuilds. Um, so again, your lock on missile weapon systems is going to be very risky pushing up when you know, the enemy could just point and click at 500 meters range and do a crazy amount of damage uh, to you. But that's always been sort of the risk. But, you know, <laughs> you win some, you lose some. My thing was that uh, I was actually totally against this before um, about having like direct line of sight in order to get like a, a short lock on time or something like that. And I was, uh, I was against it because I'm literally like Lerms are pretty much like the worst weapon system in the whole in the whole game. But and to put more and more nerfs on them. But after seeing this and actually playing it, uh, I'm actually this is really the best thing they could have done. To tell you the truth, I was wrong. Old Bob was wrong. But uh, the whole thing is, uh, it just it makes it so much better. I mean, it, you know, you 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 won't see those people hanging from the back like a thousand meters and, and lobbing missiles like all the time. They actually kind of have to get into the fight itself, share yeah. armor. Not, not a lot of people would be um, screaming at you for having lerms and all that kind of stuff. So it and, does and to make play devil's better. advocate, it <clears throat> does promote more skill based play with lerms. Yeah, and if you're actually playing as a team player and playing effectively, you can still do very well with them. 
Yeah, yeah. Especially with a lot of the other buffs they got previously. So I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah I mean, especially when when, when Lerms work really well when they're like more of a mid range weapon, not yeah. all the way in the back. Yeah. Yeah, I would say um, there's an interesting question of uh, countering lock on weapon systems. ECM mm -hmm. always used to be a very strong counter as long as you didn't get knocked or there was a probe nearby. It was a very win all or lose all scenario with ECM. Um, with ECM, though, not having this, you know, not being such a win or lose all, it's in fact really depends on whether they can see you or not. Um, AMS has a lot more prominent place as the one of the better counters to missile yeah. weapons. Even though it's a soft counter, it is. It was always sort of superseded by ECM. Why take, you know, an, a triple EMS mech when you could have just taken an ECM mech and, you know, not put so much tonnage towards you know, such frivol frivolities. Well, now, East in the game, you know, like our um, kit box with the ECM AMS. That's a huge double combo that before was a strong counter with a, you know, a weaker counter, but three of them. And so if LRMs become a big deal, you just take a lot more AMS now. And I'm, I'm kind of like, if in the future we need to balance out LRMs, if, you know, missile locks are just getting out of hand, buff, AMS mechs, buff AMS weapons. I think that would be, I, I, personally, I, I really like that because then it encourages everyone to sort of take this counter. And again, means um, your lock-on weapon systems have to try and get close and direct because you want the least mm -hmm. travel time for AMS to shoot stuff down. One thing I would like to see on regards to AMS would be if they gave some uh, quirks or buffs, to, you know, they can make it a flavor for certain mechs or something where it benefits laser AMS, which I feel, you know, it there's a lot of cases where it's just not nearly as effective as ballistic, but it would be very useful if you could have it instead of ballistic. So, or mm -hmm. like uh, skills where it would, instead of like uh, ammunition, it would increase your heat dissipation for laser MS. So it dissipate faster than, you know, your other laser weapons. So. Well, you do less heat generation, but yeah, uh, yeah, something um, along that line. Yeah. My biggest point toward, yeah, I, I think AMS, like just like with the um, heat scale limit change, is a great way to give certain mechs flavor. And um, uh, again, if like you were um, worried about the learn meta, there's a whole bunch of IS mechs that really could just do with an AMS buff. So IS actually has an AMS option. Right now, Clan has all the options and all the quirks, more or less. The only IS mechs yeah. that have quirks is the Javelin and Wolfhound. All the others are, you know, the special, the most special IS mechs. They have like, oh wow, this one has two AMS hard points and nothing else. Yeah, yeah. the Javelin is really not an AMS mech. I mean, come on. Yeah, particularly like for an the bigger IS, IS. Mech with triple AMS. <laughs> yeah, because the big thing with I IS still is, I think, um, we. The, the, there, there is a prana range. with four, but you know stuff like the Kit Fox has three of them, and it has rate of fire and range. Whereas like the Nova has three of them, and each hard point has ten percent rate of fire, so it effectively has three point nine AMS. Yeah. The IS side has almost nothing compared to that, and their bigger mechs like IS finds it a lot harder to fit things in, and their things are heavier anyway, and they're bigger. Like the laser AMS is just bigger and heavier. And there's no benefits whatsoever to using IS tech. And they don't even have quirks to try and make up the difference. It's been fun seeing all the um, heat scale limit mechs uh, being messed around with dual URAC 20 hunchies, PPC awesomes. Mm -hmm. I, I like where they're going with that because it also brings back a nostalgia to what the mechs actually look like in lore. And yeah. I think a lot of the lore buffs are going to look at that and go, my awesome actually looks like an awesome. And mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's awesome now. It's great. Yeah. Yep. Triple heavy PPC is uh, pretty scary. 45 pit point damage. PGI, they are considering, you know, pulling back that change. Who knows if it's too effective or not effective enough. Um, yeah, I, I got to see Baradul look like a schoolgirl. It was great. <laughs> my thing, at least, is like, oh, no, 45 pit point damage. That's just going to screw over smaller mechs. Yeah, imagine if there was, like, something that did 50 damage with an even faster projectile. 
and no, and no heat. heat. <laughs> <laughs> mm hmm. Let's be yes. frank. A lot of people uh, saw the the hat. Was it the Hatchman or the Axeman? Hatchman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That and was they all saw that, that and that's all they needed to know. They're like, "Wait, yep. Hatchet Man? Now we're take in my we're money." Not... Yeah, yeah. BGI, take note. Take note. I'm just yeah. Put it in the melee. <laughs> no, I wish. Um, I yeah, know. So yeah, we we talked about Flashpoint. It's coming out with the. Yeah, the new system, the Flashpoint system, a whole bunch of more scripted missions, presumably more game modes, and a couple more map, uh, mechs for twenty dollars. And the um, season pass, at least, it claims it's sixty dollars worth of expansions. So presumably, uh, each expansion is twenty dollars. So you know, a twenty dollar expansion, twenty dollar expansion, twenty dollar expansion. So Urban Warfare will be of a similar scale, I'm assuming, to Flashpoint, and the third expansion presumably is on a similar scale. So. Um, yeah, it it it, uh, it just I think it's a discounted price to get all three at once. Yeah, good deal. Mm -hmm. I am. I'm, I think I'm I got the that last Same mission. Button. And where it you need two complete team lances, I think that's where I kind of dropped off. <laughs> Spoiler oh. alert! <laughs> Sorry. No, yeah. no, that's cool. I'm half and half about these expansions, at least personally. Like um, Flashpoint isn't adding a completely old new campaign or anything like that. It's just, it's something uh, an additional thing. It's kind of on the same level. If people know XCOM One, there was um, they added the faction advent, where you could do extra advent missions. Um, it's something on the similar scale in that. And whilst that was neat. Um, you're doing the same exact same campaign again. I quite liked XCOM 2 where they did um, a, a completely new campaign called Fall of the Chosen where they, you know, they revitalized all the game mechanics and added in a new nemesis system, um, which really, you know, obviously with XCOM 2, they did a much larger expansion. And um, it, was, it was fun to come back away later again and have something completely fresh. Whereas with Flashpoint... Um, I'm not sure if it's like, you know, it's kind of like each playthrough in this game is like 70 hours or something like that. And I'll have to sit, like, it's it's fun to sit through a whole new campaign whenever new stuff comes out. But it's a, it's the same thing again, but with only slightly more on top. And so that's where I'm a little iffy about it. And, you know, uh, the odd thing again, at least with XCOM, is they actually did, um, if you bought War of the Chosen, they came out with an additional free DLC where... Um, uh, you go through legacy missions, and they have a whole mini campaign on top that I didn't even know it was coming out. But I came back and I was like, "Oh wow, this is all completely new content. I'm not even starting a new campaign, and this gives me extra bonuses to the main campaign." So, at least um, value-wise, I'm like each individual expansion isn't getting me so pumped, 
and it's a long wait between each expansion. So, and I don't even know what's in the later ones just yet. So I'm kind of trepidatious about getting the season pass, let alone even just Flashpoint on its own, personally. Yep, well, that's uh, more or less it. We now know at least their plans for the DLCs in the future. If you're really interested in stuff like Flashpoint, there's going to be two more in the future, and you can buy all of them now for a discounted price. Good. Uh, all right, guys. Well, um, I think we covered a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and I guess kind of to wrap things up, I want to give a giant thanks to uh, Dante245 for uh, stopping in tonight. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem, man. Yeah, and, and hopefully, yeah, hopefully we can we can bring in again. If uh, and again, we're you know we're not going to do the recording uh, at like nine a.m. on on your time. Uh, we yeah, do I, I'm little, like later. Uh, doing this out of my room, and there's a literal pillow right behind me, and I, I occasionally keep looking over it and uh, fond memories. <laughs> well. Those, those, those will probably be soon to be had. So, but anyway, guys, um, this has been the uh, first Circuit Podcast. Uh, as always, you can find links to all of the social medias uh, down below and anything from Dante's topics for building the community. Make sure to uh, check this out down below, and we will see you next week.